Hello guys and welcome back to another video. What you see in front of you is an automated invoice generator. If you're a small business owner or a freelancer, implementing this system into your own business could save you hours per week. Before I get into showing how this workflow works and how you can replicate this, I first wanted to let you know that this channel is going to change directions. The past two videos have been quite generic tutorials and I don't believe that's what's most exciting. I think making videos about business focused systems with real life implementations is way more interesting for you guys and way more beneficial in the long run. That's why my future videos will focus on improving the efficiency of businesses by automating workflows. There are tons of tutorials about workflows on the internet, but only very few of them actually help making your business more efficient. That's why I think I should focus on it more. Now that's been said, let's get into the workflow. As you can see, this workflow exists out of five simple nodes. Besides N8N, I use three more tools. I use Google Sheets, the Google Drive, and I use Google Docs. I chose these tools because they're free, so you can easily replicate it at home without any charge. I'll first show you what I've done inside of these tools, and then I'll show you how to set up this workflow. So first off, the Google Sheets. I've replicated a real-life CRM, so let's fill it out together. I've already filled out the boring stuff, so our client's name in this case is going to be Richard Douglas. His company name is Sublet Rentals, his address, and then the description of what we've done for him. Now for the more exciting stuff. So in this case, we rented out holiday homes and they have a fixed rate of 500 bucks a week. Let's say we're renting out the holiday home for 52 weeks, better known as a year. You can see that it auto filled the rest. That's because for the amount, the subtotal, the tax and the total amount, we've used a formula. The formulas are very straightforward. To figure out the amount, we've done E2 times F2. So we've done the amount of weeks times the week rate, which comes down to a total of 26,000. The subtotal is the same as the amount. As for the tax, the tax in the Netherlands is 21%. So we wanted to figure out what 21% of 26,000 was. So we could use both the amount or the subtotal. In this case, I chose for the subtotal. I've done the subtotal times 0 0.21 to figure out 21%. And then to calculate the total amount, you add the subtotal to the tax, which comes down to 31,460 bucks. So of course you could change out all of these rows for whatever you wish. But for this example, I chose to be a rental company. So these rows make sense. Then inside of Google Drive, I've created an invoice template. So here you have the invoice template. It is almost as basic as it can be. What you might notice is that a lot of sentences are within curly brackets. As you can see, all of the things within curly brackets are coincidentally also very similar to what we filled out in the Google Sheets CRM system. Now we're back in the N8N workflow. And to conclude, the Google Sheets is used as a CRM and where we fill in the client's information. Then the Google Drive is just used as a storage for our invoice templates. And then Google Docs is just where we've made our invoice. You could of course change these tools to whatever you like. But for the purpose of this video and to make it as accessible as possible for everyone, I've chosen to go with the free Google tools. Since we've already filled out the Google Sheets, I can show you how this workflow works. So we just click test workflow and watch the magic happen. Workflow executed successfully. I'll go into the Google Drive and show you what happened. So the workflow automatically created a copy of the invoice template. And as you can see, everything that was within the curly brackets has been changed by the information out of the Google Sheets. So no more need to manually fill in your CRM and also manually fill in your invoice templates. This could save you hours and hours a month. So let's go over what we've actually done inside of N8N. Let's start off with Google Sheets note. We've told it is to get specific rows from a specific document. And on the right side, you can see the output. As you might notice, it's exactly the same as what we just filled in in the Google Sheets. Then we go over to the Edit Fields node, which in this case is really important. That is because a lot of the output from the Google Sheets is in numbers and we need it to be in a string. To do that, we simply use the Edit Fields node to change it from a number to a string. Of course, the number is variable, so we want to take the variable from the input. You'll do that as follows. So take weeks from the left side, Implement it here as an expression. It'll be within the curly brackets, JSON code and the weeks. So it knows which item to take. And then everything will be outputted as a string. So now for the Google Drive node, we simply ask it to search for a certain file and copy that one. 
The only thing that's interesting about the Google Drive node is giving it a file name. Because we want to know which invoice belongs to which company, we tell it to copy the invoice template and call it invoice template. And then we give it a variable. The variable in this case is the company name which we entered in the Google Sheets. As you can see, the copy will be named invoice template sublet rentals. And lastly, we go on to the Google Docs node, which is where the magic happens. All we need from the Google Drive node is just the file ID, which we can easily get by doing this. Make sure it's on expression so we can get a variable. So this is the file ID of the invoice template we just copied inside of our Google Drive. All that is left is then replacing the old text with our new variable text. As you can see within the old text field, I've copied all of the text that was on the invoice within the curly brackets. So client's name, client's company, client's address, etc., etc. And for the new text, I've inputted the variables that we've gotten from the Google Sheets node and from the edit fields node. I've scrolled all the way down to show you that for the numbers, like uh, the text, for example, I've taken it from the edit fields node instead of the Google Sheets node. That's because the Google Sheets is a number which causes an error and the edit fields node text number is actually turned into a string, which makes it valid and changeable within the Google Docs. That was already it for this workflow, but I wanted to give you guys something extra to make this workflow fit to your needs. I wanted to do so by giving you three examples of things you could add to this workflow. The first thing you could add is another Google Drive node and you could tell it to take the invoice you just created and put it in a folder called processed, for example, just to make all your documents segregated and easy for you to, to find again. Then you could also add a Telegram node, a WhatsApp node or Slack node or even an email node to notify you when an invoice is created so you can search it and send it manually. But if you've already used this workflow tons of times, you could add, add another Google Docs node to download the new created file and then add a Gmail node, for example, to add that file to an email and send it off to your client just to automate the entire process and make it even less effort for you. Thank you guys for watching this video. I'd be very interested to know if you guys have actually implemented this into your own business. If you have any suggestions on workflows I can make next or workflows that would help you out, please let me know in the comments below. Before I sign off, I want to let you guys know that it's possible to get a free consultation. So if you're ever stuck on a project or need help with anything, like figuring out if one of your ideas is actually feasible to turn into a work, feel free to click the link and book your consultation. I'm glad to help you guys out. All that's left for me is thanking you guys for watching yet another video, and I hope to see you on the next one. Goodbye.